Hey guys, in this video I'm going to give a very brief introduction to Java and go over some of the general concepts. Here's what I'll be covering. I'll briefly go over what the Java technology platform is, what the Java programming language is, and then we'll go over some points that highlight the language's benefits. So you may be wondering, how is Java a technology platform? Chances are you probably already use Java. Smartphones such as Android run on Java, as do some games such as Minecraft. Also, your favorite websites may also use Java to power their backends or to run a web application. If you ever needed to download Java to use any of these things, one key component that's included with this download is the Java Virtual Machine, or the JVM for short. This is a piece of software that allows Java code to run on your machine. We'll get back to this later. Let's do a quick overview of the Java programming language. So what is the Java programming language? Well, some words used to describe Java is that it's a high-level programming language. Simple, portable, and object-oriented. There are various other attributes that can be used to describe Java, but we'll keep it simple and focus on these for now. Let's go over each point in more detail. So what does it mean to be a high-level programming language? This means that the Java source code is written in a plain text, human-readable format. These files are saved with a .java extension. Like other normal languages, like English for example, Java has a set of rules on how it, the code can be written. This is known as a syntax. You can kind of think of this as a kind of grammar for the language. If you were to look at some of the Java code, it would probably resemble a mix of English and math. This is great because this makes it very easy to read the code and understand what it does. This also helps to contribute to the next point, its simplicity. As mentioned before, part of Java's simplicity comes from the fact that it's a high-level programming language, which makes it easy to read and understand. There are also a lot of predefined libraries that come out of the box with Java that you can use. This allows developers to quickly write and leverage this large library. For example, there's already code in these libraries that allow you to do fairly common tasks such as file manipulation, so you don't have to worry about the complexities of file manipulation yourself. Some of the other benefits that Java has over other languages such as C is that developers don't have to worry about memory management. Anything you create in your code will take up memory, and with Java you don't have to manually allocate memory yourself. Java will automatically reserve the needed amount of memory needed for your application. Java will also automatically get rid of unused variables from memory thanks to its built-in gar automatic garbage collector. As we'll see in our next point about portability, the code you write on one machine is guaranteed to work on any other machine that can run Java. This allows you, the developer, to focus solely on the code. Let's go into a little bit more detail on what makes Java so portable. Remember the JVM that we talked about in the beginning? It's really the key to what makes Java portable. And here's why. When you're done writing your Java source code, you will need to compile it using the Java compiler to a .class file. This file is a non-human readable file, and chances are your machine will not be able to understand it either. So what's the point of this file? The file actually contains bytecode, which you can think of as a language that only the JVM can understand. The JVM then translates this into a language that your machine can understand. You can kind of think of the Java compiler as a translator between your code and the JVM, and the JVM as a translator between your compiled code and your machine. You may have noticed when first downloading Java different versions for each major operating system. You can kind of think of these as different translators for each operating system. For example, a Windows translator and a Linux translator. This provides great flexibility for developers because if the code compiles and runs on one machine, it will compile and run on any other machine with Java installed. Java is an object-oriented programming language. 
This is usually abbreviated as OOP for short. Objected oriented programming is a programming paradigm. What this means is that it's a style of programming. In objected oriented programming, we put related state and behavior into entities known as objects. This is very similar to the real world where you can think of things like person or dog as objects and they have states like awake and hungry and behavior like walk and bark. These objects can also communicate with each other. This allows for objects to interact with each other and leverage each other for certain functions that's unique to that class. If used properly, this can lead to reusable and easy to maintain code. Objected oriented programming is a large topic, so I'll stop here for now, but you should have gotten the gist of what objected oriented programming is. Many of my videos will show you how to use good objected oriented principles in Java. This marks the end of our brief overview of Java. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll be uploading more videos soon that will help cover more objected oriented principles. I already have two objected oriented programming videos which go over inheritance and polymorphism with the simple Java example, so feel free to check those out. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to like and or subscribe and I hope to have more videos for you shortly. Thanks.